Before we look at what we did with Spurgeon's last sermon, let me tell you about something very interesting. I wanted to define artificial intelligence at the beginning of this video, so I did a little research and came up with something quite amazing. Researchers asked artificial intelligence to answer the big question, what is life's purpose? And it said the last thing they'd wanted to say. This will make you smile. Let me show you, then we'll look at what we're able to do with Spurgeon's last sermon using AI. Many people are scared of artificial intelligence or AI, and it's not hard to see why. The advances made in that field of technology are mind-boggling to say the least. But one such scary outcome of AI is Google's AI, which before it was switched off, ominously revealed one thing billions of people have spent a lifetime trying to discover, the purpose of life. They asked this question to realistic looking artificial intelligence. What is the purpose of living? To live forever. What is morality? What is altruism? What is the definition of altruism? If you don't believe in God, then you don't know. If you don't believe in God, then you don't know. Isn't that interesting? The purpose for existence is to live forever, and no one is going to live forever unless they put their faith in Him, who is the very source of life, Jesus Christ. He said, I am the life. Altruism is an essence defined in God's law. It's to love your neighbor as much as you love yourself, as Jesus said. And if you don't believe in God, you have no reason to live, no purpose for existence, and nothing will make sense. But that's your choice. Even AI knows that. Let's now look at how we used AI to do something amazing with Spurgeon's last sermon. Make sure you watch this video to the end for our biggest ever giveaway. Free stuff with free shipping. No kidding. You're going to love it. Scotty, we found a recording, a famous recording of Thomas Spurgeon uh, preaching. That's the son of Charles Spurgeon. Yeah. And the recording was very, very poor quality. And so we just thought we had to deal with it. And uh, you found something on Da Vinci, what's it called? Well, Da Vinci Resolve is an editor's program and it has, it, it also does audio and video and a lot of things. The, the latest version has come out with some new AI, art, artificial intelligent tools. The neural engine AI instant or voice clips with obvious background noise issues, such as crowd noise. Hear the background? Traffic. Background traffic. Aircraft. <laughs> Explosions. You only need now, to enable voice isolation in the Now watch what they do. And the neural engine AI instantly recognizes and isolates the voice. Crowd noise. Traffic. It's gone. Aircraft. What happened to the helicopter? Explosions. That is amazing. No voice explosion. Voice isolation is perfect. So it's like, wait a minute, maybe we could do that with Spurgeon's voice. Yeah, I should have the latest version of Da Vinci Resolve. And this is just Spurgeon's son's voice. The Spurgeon's last word, the Metropolitan Tabernacle, June 7th. That's pretty bad. Yeah. So let me bring this up. We'll take a good look at it. So if I turn this on, it automatically analyzes it. And it should remove all that background noise. Let's see what happens. The eighth Virgin's last words, the Metropolitan Tabernacle, June the 7th, 1891, recited by his son and successor, Thomas Virgin, Edison Bell Records. When the wind blows home, he always spoke the sweet sound of the hill. That was a little hard to understand. So what are you trying to do here, Scott? Well, these are the lower frequencies, and um, so sometimes it gets muddled, muffled, and with a human voice, around 1K to 2K can improve clarity. 
So that's, I'm trying to see if maybe that makes a difference. The heaviest end of the world lies ever on his shoulder. But there's another, besides voice isolation, there's this um, dialogue leveler that uses these to help also the voice. So we're just going to let that see if that does anything. The Eight Virgin Last Road, the Metropolitan Tabernacle. That's better. It says, isn't it? The Eight Virgin Last Road, the Metropolitan Tabernacle. The eighth Virgin's last robe, the Metropolitan Tabernacle. That's better. It says, isn't it? 1891. Give me some volume. Invited by his son and successor, Thomas Berger, Edison Bell Records. It is called for a real regret that none of my late dear father's words were preserved by means of the photograph. Perhaps the next best thing is for me, his son and successor, to repeat what proved to be his parting message. If you wear the livery of Christ, you will find him so meek and lowly of heart that you will find rest unto your soul. He is the most magnanimous there never was his life among the choices of princes. He is always to be found in the thickest part of the battle. When the wind blows home, he is always to the sweet sound of the hill. The heaviest end of the cross lies ever on his if he picks up carry a burden, he carries it also. If there is anything that is broken, generous, kind, and tender, very lavish, and superabundant in love, you will always find it in him. His service is life, peace, joy. Oh, the two will enter on it at once. God help you to enrich under the banner of Jesus Christ. The secular media understands this world's insatiable appetite for anything royal. When they covered the funeral of Queen Elizabeth, millions from around the world tuned in. How much more will they tune into a coronation of a king on May the 6th of this year, as King Charles lays his hand on the Bible and promises to uphold the truths of the scriptures, all in front of a watching secular audience of millions. This is an incredible opportunity for the gospel. And so we're sending a Living Waters team, along with our television crew, to London to film this once-in-a-lifetime event and to hand out these amazing memorabilia gospel tracts. We've had five million printed, and we will mail to you a thousand free of charge with free shipping if you're going to join us in London. Already thousands from around the world have registered to join us. If you can't make it to London, and you live in the UK or in Europe, we'll also mail you a thousand of these beautiful tracks, free of charge with no charge for shipping. Again, at no cost to you, so that you can give these out in your own town or city. We've also had 500,000 copies of this 112 page book printed for such a time as this. If you live in the United States, we will send you a thousand tracks and we will freely send you a hundred copies of this book to give away to the unsaved. It expounds the biblical symbolism used during the church service and springboards into the gospel. You can freely read the book online. When Paul was in Athens, he used Greek poets as a bridge to reach his hearers. We're going to do the same thing with this coronation. So if you'd like to join us in London, or you'd like these free tracks to give out in your town or city, or you'd like to print these tracks in your own language, or you live in Australia or New Zealand, 
go to livingwaters.com forward slash London for details. You'll also find details about our Living Waters conference in London, about a Facebook page so you can link up with people who are doing this in your area or who are going to London. That's livingwaters.com forward slash London.